Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now I promised I wasn't going to do another 40k video straight away and then I got a really good question so I'm doing a 40k video straight away. What I'm going to do today is look at how you can paint a power sword. Oops. Now if I'm perfectly honest ordinarily I just do my power swords silver with gold handles and you know I don't tend to do a lot of these. So this is looking more at ways you can make them sort of like they are on the box and that's that kind of cartoonish glowing blue effect. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this but I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest and the cool thing about this technique is that it works with a whole bunch of things. In particular if you're doing Tyranids for example just swap out the colors and use something else and you've got a really good way of painting really long claws. So bear that in mind. Where I'm going to start from first of all though is a nice easy base coat of the fang on the blade. So easy as prep your paint up and then just coat the whole thing in the fang. I'm not going to worry too much about uh, these little, what do you call them, like little power doofers that sit in the middle of the blade. Um, just cover the whole thing. There we go, the fang is dry and we have a blue sword. Nice and simple. Now's where you want to give some thought to how you want to actually highlight this sword. So I'm going to stick to my sort of Saturday morning cartoon look in that I'm going to do one side bright coming towards the tip and then the other side I'm going to leave this side of the tip dark and sort of brighten up down here. Okay so I want that sort of inverted shininess where one side's catching the light. You know it's it's a stylistic choice. <laughs> you could turn around and just do it all shinier towards the tip but I think to really show off how this this technique can look I'm going to I'm going to stick with what I had in mind. Now first things first we're going to grab Fenrisian grey. Now get some of this out onto your palette. You don't need too much and then you're going to water it down way more than you normally would. Okay we want the coverage on this to be pretty terrible if I'm honest. You want it to be past milky. Um, the trouble with this is that it's very difficult to sort of describe how much water to add in. Um, a bit of practice here will help out though. So what I'm looking for, we're starting to sort of get there, I'm just going to dab a little bit more in. And it's almost down to a shade sort of consistency. Now I want to get that off my brush because if I have too much on it's going to be a disaster. Now let's get some of this onto my brush. And what I'm going to do is start by making sure I'm not going to leave that big chunky bit on. What I'm going to do is start close to the bottom and sort of drag up towards the tip here. And you see how that's very, very thin. Okay, that's barely leaving anything behind on there at all. And when it dries, it's going to look a very pale transition. Now I'll do quickly the same to the other side and instead of starting at the top I'll start about halfway down, okay two thirds down and just one simple motion, drag in the opposite direction and collect at the bottom. Okay now you'll notice that does almost nothing to the sword at first and then once that layer's had time to dry get yourself some fresh paint and instead of starting back where we began from the first time, that's better, let's leave a little bit more of the sort of base color behind and we'll start a little bit further up. We're going to do the same thing again, just another layer of Fenrisian gray or Fenris gray, whichever name it is, and draw up towards the tip. So you might start to see now how we've got the, the transition in color. This is a little bit messy along the section here. Um, it's much easier to do when you haven't got a camera in front of us. So you guys will probably have much better result than I'm getting here. But the technique is the same. <laughs> then do the same thing again. Always starting just a little bit further up the blade and always bringing the point towards the tip. And then do it again and then do it again. <laughs> really this is one where you just do it until you're satisfied with how the transition effect is going to look. Um, 
Personally, I like to go until I've got the actual base color. So you see at the tip here now, I finally got Fin Rizzi in gray. So this is probably going to be where I stop adding that on. Now, before we go up to our next color, also in gray, I really want to make sure that that Fin Rizzi in gray is dry because we don't want to lift any of this paint off when we add a bit more water to it. So I've left that about 10 minutes to dry. But same procedure again, if you can believe that. I've now got my Ulthone Grey, watered it down to the same sort of consistency. I'll just check on my thumbnail there what I've got. And then same thing again. But this time you're really only doing it towards the very tips. Okay, so you want to put the finishing touches on this highlight now. So probably only do a couple of coats of this. Now after that's had plenty of time to dry, we can see the effect that's given us. And Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> might be the best way of putting it. In the future, I would probably actually go a little bit lighter further up the blade. I think these two sort of extreme light looks would look better closer together, but eh, this is experimenting. So what I've got here is my Gilliman Blue. It's one of the shades, uh, sorry, glazes. And I'm just going to put this all over the blade. Don't need to be too careful with it, but you don't really want to bucket it on either. This is just to add a bit of color and it'll help sort of bring those uh, those steps together. Now I've got just a little bit of white scar and I'm going to do a quick highlight towards the very edges of everything. So let me see if I can get this on camera there. Just a little bit of white right along the center of the blade towards the tip. And then along these edges, down this one too. Oops. So with a couple of extra details done, those white highlights applied, and a quick coat of Minotaur and varnish, there's our finished power sword. Now like I said, this isn't how I would normally paint mine, and I think you can see that the, uh, what would you call it, the gradient is a little bit patchy, but the technique for this is fairly simple. It's time consuming, but not a difficult one to achieve yourself. So have a bit of a practice with it, have a play, see what you think. As ever guys, you can drop a comment in the box below or get in touch on my Facebook or Twitter. Those are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.